first time in their short history, UTSA football pays a visit to the Sunshine State. It is the 2014 Conference USA opener. FAU Stadium in newly named Howard Schnellenberger Field as the Roadrunners get ready for their first ever matchup against Florida Atlantic. Welcome to UTSA Football Insider. I'm Hector Ledesma. The Roadrunners are going through a little change of pace in getting ready for the Owls. That they're starting the season by playing three games in 16 days, they've essentially had the last two weeks off. Not from practice, but from game action. Coming off the bye, let's take a look at UTSA's last outing, the game at Oklahoma State on the 13th. Promising start that night in Stillwater with a nice Kenny Harrison punt return that led to a field goal. From there, though, the Cowboys answered with two touchdowns through the rest of that first quarter and 10 more points in the second. But some life in the third, down 27-10, to 10, and with Tucker Carter on the sideline nursing a re-aggravated shoulder injury, True freshman Blake Bogenschutz engineered a six-play, 73-yard drive and capped it in style. 24-yard touchdown run. Sean added another field goal early in the fourth to cut the deficit to 27-13. But that's as close as UTSA would come. 43-13 the final. And as much as that outcome stung right after the game, a week later, not much of a hangover. It's tough when you go into a bye week with a 1-2 and two record. Just no matter what your morale is, it's it's tough to do. Um, I really am not a big fan of bye weeks. I would just rather, you know, flush the loss and move on. It felt different, like, not playing this past Saturday, but at the same time, like, we had a couple guys banged up, so just to uh, get them back on their feet and get them healthy and back on the field. So after a win to open the season, followed by back-to-back -back games against programs at top five conferences, and then a week off, it's now time to open league play. We tackle that and several other topics like the similarities between FAU and UTSA in this week's Coker's Corner. Well, Coach, it seems like an eternity since the Oklahoma State game, but we haven't had a chance to sit down since that, that ball game. So your takeaway and the positives that can come out of that loss in Stillwater. Well, you know, I tell you, it has been an eternity. And when you, when you lose a game like that and had the open date, we needed the open date for a lot of reasons. But... When you lose a game, it makes it really a long two weeks before you play because there's a bad taste in your mouth from the from the open, from the from the loss to Oklahoma State. But again, what we learned from it again, I think we learned a lot from it. They're a very good football team for one. We know that, and uh, we uh, from our mistakes and things they did well, what we can improve on is going to be a huge for us. And now you start Conference USA play this this week, and going back to the white helmets here, you know, the sharp white matted looking helmets, and just the excitement that the kids feel when they put on something different. Well, Mike V is our head equipment manager. He does a fantastic job, and it's exciting for our players because uh, they're dressed extremely well. They're they're very sharp in their equipment. The main thing is protection, obviously, but again, the white helmets, the the, the navy helmets. Uh, we'll wear our white jerseys, our orange pants, and and uh, again, they kind of look forward to that because. Uh, it's kind of a fashion statement. It's really sad to say that because college football is kind of gone. That way. It's Oregon's fault, I think, because all of the things that they've done. But, no, it's exciting for our players. And speaking of Conference USA openers, Florida Atlantic, if you would speak to them and the challenges they're going to pose for your ball club. Well, they really are. They've got a new stadium, new facilities there, and they've done recruited. Well, they're a lot like us because they're surrounded by very good football players. We are in San Antonio, and they are in, in Boca Raton, Florida, which if you know where Boca Raton is, it's South Florida near Miami, Fort Lauderdale, that area. A lot of great football there, a lot of great football in San Antonio. You mentioned the similarities between UTSA and Florida Atlantic from a recruiting standpoint and just those aspects. It's staggering to me, Coach, the, the parallels between the two universities. Florida Atlantic, for those who don't know, is a relatively new university compared to you guys. Right. They're, they're, they've been around for a while, but they just started playing football in 2001. Second year in Conference USA, both started by former Miami right. coaches, Howard Schnellenberger over at Florida Atlantic, and both former Miami catchers, coaches who won national titles with the Hurricanes. It just, it, it almost seems as if Florida Atlantic is the southern mirror for UTSA. If you can just speak to the uncanny similarities between the two programs. Well, there are a lot of similarities. I know when we started this program, I spent some time with Howard Stellenberger. He's very gracious to me about how he started this program. Went through really kind of a step by step by step thing. And that's before they had the facilities. They were playing at that time, I think, in the Orange Bowl or in uh, Dolphin Stadium, one or the other. And uh, I think there are a lot of similarities there. And I think the thing is Howard's very helpful. Uh, again, recruited extremely well. And, and uh, you know, I think uh, it, it's just so uncanny the similarities of both programs. And I think it's exciting that we're playing playing uh, for Atlanta at their new stadium. 
you know, you look at the stretch you guys have gone through on the road at the Oklahoma State game we talked about, then the bye, another road game. It, does it seem like forever that you guys have been, kind of been doing this on the road, off week? Just uh, for, It's been forever since you've been home. Does it feel like that for you guys, and how much adjusting ha- have you had to do as a head coach? Well, I think this. We have played on the road several times, and I think you know, we, we really want to get back home. Uh, our, our crowd, our, our students in the Alamo Dome, it's, it's a great, uh, I think, uh, advantage for us. And we want to get back to the Alamo Dome. And we played a, a really a good football team in Arizona in the Dome and lost a close game there, a game we had a chance to win. So, yeah, we'd love to get back home. We'd love to come back with a victory, a Conference USA win at Florida Atlantic and get back home. Yeah, we talked about how Florida Atlantic started football in 2001. By 2007, they had not only received the bowl bid, but they ended up winning the New Orleans Bowl that year. Yeah. And that marked the quickest a program had gone from go- coming into existence to receiving a bulbid and then winning a bulbid. Something you guys are in line to break as early as this year. Does that come across your mind at all, Coach, just setting that kind of history? Well, really, not uh, not setting history so much, but being in their record. But again, for us, that's a goal. I, know I talked individually, met individually with every one of our players, and every one of them wanted to win a bowl game. And uh, I think that's an opportunity that we have to win a conference championship, go to a bowl game, to win a bowl game. So they want to do that. That's their goal. And uh, we as coaches, we got to do everything we can to give us that opportunity. And a great opportunity coming up with the beginning of conference play coming up this weekend. Coach, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it as always. And we will see you when the team finally gets back home (laughs) next week. Thank Thank you, Coach. Five home games left for Coach Coker and the Roadrunners in 2014. Next one comes on October 4th against New Mexico. 2.30 2.30 start, best way to get your tickets for that one and other games at the Alamo Dome, go to GoUTSA.com. Time for today's trivia question. Perfect time to ask this with the Roadrunners coming off the bye. What is their all-time record in games following off weeks? The answer, of course, later in the show. We are just getting started right here on UTSA Football Insider. Up next, we preview a brand new segment as a Roadrunners constant adds his personal touch. And later, we sit down with one of the original 18 why family history wasn't going to stand in this Roadrunner's way of putting on the orange and blue when UTSA Football Insider continues. To the right of Bogan shoots, send Grubb in motion, fake it to him, quarterback draw, Bogan shoots 20, he's to the 15, to the 10, 5, touchdown! Blake Bogan shoots 24 yards. Welcome to Roadrunner Football, Blake Bogan shoots, touchdown UTSA. That game at Oklahoma State came on the heels of the matchup against Arizona. The next opponent, Florida Atlantic, also knows a thing or two about facing power programs back-to-back. The Owls started their season with losses to Nebraska and Alabama. FAU next beat Tulsa before falling at Wyoming this past weekend. So the Owls come in at 1-3. and three. But you know what they say about conference games. You can pretty much throw the records out the window. They don't do as much uh, moving and, and uh, you know, stunting as Oklahoma State did. And uh, so we plan to just attack them. We're actually playing for something now. You know, we like, hopefully get to win out and get first in the conference, play for a conference championship, and then go to a ball game. So let's see if the Roadrunners can get back on track. As for what's being said about UTSA leading up to this one, Tim Griffin of the Express News caught up with a man leading the charge for the Florida Atlantic Owls. Hi, I'm here with Florida Atlantic coach Charlie Partridge. The Owls are off to a 1-3 and three start in a rough early schedule that saw them lose their first two games to Nebraska and Alabama. First of all, Coach, I'm wondering, what do you feel like the benefits of those two early games could be for you guys spinning forward into the rest of the season? Well, I think, uh, you know, UTSA, they played a tough uh, schedule as well. They get a great win versus Houston. Um, when you're playing against great competition like those first two games, uh, it, it really shows what, where you need the most work and what your potential strengths are. So uh, if you use it right, it can be a great advantage for you as you move forward. Coach, you guys had a very difficult loss Saturday in Wyoming where uh, Wyoming was able to go out and win the game on a field goal on uh, in the final seconds. How do you keep from letting that defeat linger and uh, spill over into the rest of the season? Sure, you know, the old phrase, you know, 
Hawaii as you can, right? Wyoming beat you twice, right? Um, the, good, the good news is UTSA has our immediate respect. They're a good football team, and, and they've proven that on film. So that helps. The fact that it's a conference game helps. I'm glad that we're back home. That helps, and we came out of it healthy. So uh, those are a few things that help us move forward, and we're just trying to build the, men, the, you know, the mentality around here. We've got to win each day and let the record take care of itself and the scoreboard take care of itself. Speaking of UTSA, this game will have a lot of meaning for Roadrunners coach Larry Coker as he goes back to South Florida for the first time with his team. How do you feel like his team might co compare to some others you've seen in Conference USA over the this season? Well, it would be a big deal to me personally. I'm, I'm born and raised down here, even though I've worked primarily up north. Uh, but, you know, grew up watching the Hurricanes and Granted, I was uh, beyond living here when he was really running the show, but I have a ton of respect for what he's been able to do. And, boys, he's done a great job with that program there. Um, on defense, their D-tackle, uh, Ashad Mabry, has certainly grabbed my attention. Him and Singletary are front, and then you look at Akacha and Wade, they're playing at a high level. On offense, just how, how multiple they are, from spread to two back to quick break huddle on first sound, get you off balance, and someone who's really, really becoming one of the better players we've seen on film uh, is David Morgan, the tight end 82. He is a physical blocker. He's got very, very good uh, quickness and speed. Obviously, he's leading the team in, in reception, so that's, that's a dangerous young man, uh, one of the better players we've seen all, all season. So we'll have our hands full. Coach, thanks again for taking the time to join us, and good luck this season. No doubt UTSA's offensive line will play a big part in success the Roadrunners hope to enjoy against Charlie Partridge and the Owls. Speaking of success in the offensive line, Nate Leonard could be in line for another honor. The standout center is a candidate for the CLASS Award, which encourages senior athletes to make a positive impact as leaders in their communities. The list of 30 candidates is going to be narrowed down to 10 finalists in November. Now, most of you who followed Roadrunners football over the last now four years probably know that Nate's also a bit of a character, not afraid to let loose in front of a camera. So we figured, why not give the kid a microphone? Here's a snippet of the antics we can expect from Nate here on UTSA Insider throughout the season. My name is Nate Leonard, and welcome to the first episode of Between Two Chairs. I am here with um, Tucker Carter. I play center for UTSA, and it just so happens to be that you're my quarterback. Um, so can you tell the people at home what it's like to take a snap from me? Um, sometimes it's really sweaty. Sometimes it's, uh, perfectly on target, like 99% of the time. So that's about it. What is Coach Coker's biggest fear? I would say having a discombobulated team. That's incorrect. Coach Coker is afraid of nothing. Also, I would have accepted the chupacabra. Sorry. If you're not familiar, that's Nate's take on Between Two Ferns, a web show by actor, comedian Zach Galifianakis. Still to come on The Insider, we sit down with a young man who's not only no stranger to UTSA football, but no stranger to San Antonio. We'll return. One of the original 18, he's been with the program since the start. But David Glasgow II is about more than just longevity. He's the program's all-time leader in total touchdowns and in rushing yards. All of that coming after he starred for Wagner High School right here in San Antonio. A chance to chat with Glasgow too about those accomplishments and more, including a little family rivalry. David, all-time leading rusher all-time in touchdowns in terms of leaders in program history. I, I bet that sounds pretty good to you. Yeah, um, you know, it's just, it's an honor. It's an honor to me, just the simple fact that I'm blessed enough to play college football to me is an honor, but you know, to have all those accolades that you just stated come along with it, you know, I'm just, I'm blessed and grateful. To be able to come up with those kinds of numbers, you've been here since, since day one, one of the original 18. Is it kind of, when you think back to those days and you compare it to now, 
is it does it feel like a lot more than four or five years ago yeah well i mean it just it feels like forever but you know uh, like i remember when i first got into college my dad was just telling me how it's going to go by so fast and he was right it's, it has gone by fast but at the same time i've made sure to cherish the moments i have with my brother slash my teammates and these coaches on the staff and everybody and you know it's just it's great to say that we started something which is huge especially in my home city you know it's just a privilege Speaking of your home city, former start of Wagner, when you when you think back to your high school days and being able to, to carry that over, that success over to UTSA, does it make it more gratifying that the success is coming in your hometown? Yeah, yeah, most definitely because, I mean, uh, you know, I, I had a lot of adjusting to do when I first got here, you know, because I wasn't used to, you know, Wagner. I was used to getting the ball like 30 times a game. And, you know, now here it's like, okay, well, we got good receivers now. We got a good quarterback now. We got other guys, you know, you just aren't the team. You know, I had to adjust, you know, it was kind of hard at first, but you know, uh, I think I've adjusted well. And uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm just grateful to be here in the city that I love and that I grew up in and doing what I'm doing, able to help contribute. You mentioned your dad a little while ago. He's a former football player mm -hmm. for then Southwest Texas mm -hmm. State now Texas State and you know there's always been that good rivalry between Texas State and UTSA did he give you a little bit of ribbing when you were first committing to, to UTSA no not actually he he wanted he wished me the best when I committed here it wasn't no you need to go to Texas State you know <laughs> it, he uh he actually was very happy for me now when we played him he was giving me kind of a hard time of course but you know uh when we won you know I had to give him a hard time back so but no nah, my dad's always been supportive of anything I've done 100% and uh, I just, I'm just i just grateful to have a father figure like that in my life. That game against Texas State two years ago to close that season, does it get any better than that? Especially considering Pops went to, to Texas State? Not really, not really, because you know, he was he was talking mess at, it was right before, right after Thanksgiving, <laughs> and you know, he was talking, talking a little noise at the dinner table while we all sitting there eating, and I'm just eating like, okay, just wait. <laughs> and then, you know, we won, so, like I said, I just gave him a hard time after the game was over. He was just all last. What was that next dinner like after the game when you kind of got it? You got to give it back to him a little bit. Quiet. He always, he always gets quiet when I find a way to prove him wrong. You know, he. But I know I know he doesn't mean nothing by it. He deep down, my dad is my biggest fan, and I know he uh, he supports me in every endeavor I do. David, appreciate the time. Best of luck the rest of the year, Thank you. and we look forward to, to seeing you. you compete more the rest of the year. Still to come, you know football's about more than just guys on the field. Aaron Carreño stops by with a piece on one of the Roadrunner's biggest supporters when UTSA Football Insider returns. It has been a while since UTSA has been home, the fourth of this month against Arizona, and it's still another week until they get to do it again at the Dome, October 4th against New Mexico. For tickets to that game and the other four left on the home schedule, go to GoUTSA.com. UTSA Florida Atlantic, one of several games pitting Conference USA teams against each other this weekend. Two more on your screen here. Let's start, though, with UTEP at Kansas State. That's at 11 a.m. in Manhattan, Kansas. FIU and UAB, one of those Conference USA openers. Louisiana Tech travels to battle defending national runner-up Auburn, who's coming off a hard-fought win at aforementioned Kansas State. And Rice visits Southern Miss in another Conference USA matchup to wrap up the weekend. Time now for one of our favorite parts of the show, visit with Aaron Cadenio, who met a young lady that, as the saying goes, wasn't born in Texas, but couldn't wait to get here. Absolutely, but in her case, she couldn't wait to get to UTSA. Most of the members on the cheerleading squad are from the great state, but as you're about to see, Texas doesn't have a monopoly on students who love the Roadrunners. Newcomer Michelle Turner began her collegiate career at Iowa Western, a community college in Council Bluff, Iowa. The little town near Omaha may be small, but much like UTSA, the football program proved to be doing big things. There was a football program at my last school. We were actually ranked number one in the country for about two years for JUCO. So, and then I came here and it was awesome to be part of, you know, a team that, a school that's a lot bigger than a junior college. And so, like, especially at the football games and stuff, there was a lot more people, like, coming from a game where there's probably 500 people to 35,000 people is a big difference. Weeks before the home opener, Michelle talked with Insider about her journey to UTSA. Well, I have a friend that's from Dallas that I actually cheered at Iowa Western with. And so she kind of told me about the school, so I watched their video from Nationals. I was like, wow, they're awesome. 
And so I came down and watched a couple practices and saw that the team was just really encouraging all the time and really positive practice, really energetic um, all the time. So I was like, wow, that's something that I want to be a part of. Today, Michelle says she's glad she made the transfer to UTSA, especially after cheering at this year's Orange Out. It was kind of overwhelming because like getting there with this um, beforehand and it was kind of raining. I was like, oh, this is not good because it's going to mess up my hair and stuff. And then we went inside and it was fun. And there's with all the smoke and the fireworks and all the commotion going on, the huge band is huge. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. Aaron, great job as always. I know a lot of students like Michelle aren't from the great state of Texas, but they're just as big a part of the campus as students who are from here. Yes. You are absolutely correct. And one of the things I really do enjoy about covering UTSA is that they're a really close-knit family, and I can't wait to showcase some of the other stories these upcoming weeks. Aaron, thank you very much. Let's answer our trivia question. What is UTSA's all-time record following a bye? Three and two. That includes a 2-0 mark last year when they beat UAB on October 26, 52-31, and then North Texas in Denton, 21-13 on November 23rd. Kickoff against Florida Atlantic is set for 4 o'clock our time on Saturday, like they did in Houston early this year. Roadrunners aiming to give the home team its first loss at home. A 50-21 W against Tulsa, the Owls' only game at FAU Stadium thus far. That is all the time we've got on this edition of UTSA Football Insider. We're going to see you next week when the Roadrunners finally play at home again. For Tim Griffin, Aaron Carreño, and all the great folks over at UTSA, have a great one.